uh, you know, nothing's more fantastic than the objects that have been reclaimed by the sea, that, that are neither their historical self nor are they entirely natural now, but they have the elements of both. It's, it's a military hat of some sort. I don't know if it's decorative or functional or... Well, what about our objects? When Dana and I were reading um, the history of the fort that just came up over and over again is just how constantly the fort has to continue the process of remaking itself because of it, because of the harshness of this environment. So our idea is, is to to create objects which um, which are more fantastical, which really kind of elaborate the the real story of the of the fortress here, which is uh, a constant battle between. Uh, the land and the sea. Well, then we started our drawings and we were trying to imagine um, the interior life of the of the fort and the kinds of things that you would find if maybe the fort was inundated by the ocean and, and um, the objects were kind of deteriorated but not the the structure of the building so much but the the objects that were in daily use by the soldiers and the staff. Um, I might look for, um, you know, a military boot, for instance, whereas Dana will find a very feminine 19th century shoe. And the inclusion of that is, makes the hook much deeper for the piece. They'll take on this veneer of, of hybridity between a natural and an artificial object. We're working with a um, scientific fabrication studio and they're going to create the illusion of encrustation over a hundred years using sculptural materials and resins and plasters and natural materials. So that, that's how we want these objects to, to exist. It's, it's a kind of fantastical archaeology. Mm -hmm.